So I'll teach you step by step from this to this. Draw with me step by step. Ni hao one page tutor here. In this video, I'll be showing you how I relate all the chemical reaction for each homologous series, alkane, alkene, carboxylic acid, alcohol, ester, just on one page. Which is just the main part of chapter 2, the chemical reaction, chemical property. So this actually shows you that why I call myself as one page shooter because I like to simplify a long chapter onto just one page. So first thing, write all the name for the homologous series first and write their molecular formula. I'm using ethanol because fermentation can only form ethanol, please be careful of this. And glucose, which is the monosaccharide, is derived from starch, the polysaccharide. So I'm I'm including starch and glucose in this note because there's one question in past year asking how to form ethanol from starch. I'll be using the structure formula because structure formula is easier to see how to form the ester. Okay, so first one, hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, just look at the name, hydrolysis. Lysis is breaking. Hydro is water breaking of a complex molecule by using water to form glucose. Hydrolysis is unequal to hydration even though both using water. Hydration is just using water but hydrolysis is using water in acidic or alkaline environment because they need dilute hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide as catalyst because this reaction is very slow. So hydrolysis to form glucose then glucose undergo fermentation Fermentation needs a catalyst, which is the enzyme found inside yeast zymase to form ethanol. Ethanol will go through oxidation because look at the structure formula. Ethanol only has one O. If we were to have another O attached to the, to the first carbon, you need to add oxygen, right? So oxidation. Oxidation, you need either one oxidizing agent, which is acidified potassium manganate 7 or acidified potassium dichromate 6. So just remember that the KMnO4 is purple and if they oxidize something already, they will become colorless. While for K2Cr2O7, initially it's in orange color and once it oxidizes something, it becomes green. Okay, so how ethanol and ethanoic acid form ester? True, esterification. You need a catalyst. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, just remember that once you use sulfuric acid, you need to use concentrated one. So concentrated and heat it in 180 degrees Celsius. And also, once you form ester, you will release water. How to form H2O? Ethanol need to donate OH, while ethanoic acid need to donate H to form H2O. If you couldn't remember or oh, which one, which one donating OH, which one donating H only, you just remember ethanoic acid, the name longer, right? carboxylic acid name longer so it will remain more stuff it will remain the O while ethanol will donate O and H if you remember how the structure works helps you better on the naming remember you have to draw acid first then only the alcohol but while naming you have to terbalikkan how to from ester form back ethanol and ethanoic acid through hydrolysis because ester is a big structure it's a complex substance so breaking of ester using water and just now I said that hydrolysis needs acidic or alkaline environment right so dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute sodium hydroxide with water to break them into ethanol and ethanoic acid so just standardize uh. once you see hydrolysis you use hydrochloric acid so the starch to glucose one you also can use hydrochloric acid okay, from ethanol become ethene are we using dehydration or hydration it's commonly asked in exam and also, there are people who messed up between dehydration and hydration. So how I remember is true, the structure of ethanol and ethene. Look at the ethanol, it has OH and H, which is practically the water, formation of water. While ethene has double bond, because one C can only have four bonds, so double bond and the bottom two is empty. So to become ethanol, you need to hydrate, your, hydrate the ethene to become ethanol. While well, from ethanol become ethene, which is lesser H, need to dehydrate the ethanol. Dehydration needs dehydrating agent, which is red hot porcelain chip, red hot porous pot, concentrated sulfuric acid, 180 degrees Celsius, just like what I stated just now. Sulfuric acid, you need to use concentrated and also 180 degrees Celsius. Then last one is aluminium oxide and also heat it. 
very common questions for dehydration is the set up apparatus. So how I remember set up apparatus for the dehydration is to divide them into two. The left hand side would be what is inside boiling tube. The content are those reactants, how you handle them. And right hand side is how you collect the ethene gas formed with a product form. Ethene has physical property of insoluble in water. So ethene, you can collect it using water displacement method. Like when to use water displacement method is when the product form is insoluble in water. You can collect hydrogen using water displacement method because hydrogen is insoluble in water. When to use boiling tube and when to use test tube. Boiling tube is when you direct heat the content inside boiling tube. While for test tube is you using a water bath, then test tube put inside water bath, then you heat it. So firstly, you put glass wool soaked with ethanol because ethanol is a liquid form in room temperature. Glass wool is a solid, so if you use glass wool soaked in ethanol, it's easier for handling. So you put in, then you put the dehydrating agent. I'm using porcelain chip. You heat the porcelain chip until red hot first, then only heat the ethanol because the porcelain chip need to get ready for the dehydration. Think it like that. You tebalik kan, you heat ethanol first, then only heat porcelain chip and all the ethanol will remain as ethanol without becoming to ethene. So heat the porcelain chip until red hot first, then only heat the glass wool soak with ethanol. Remember to draw a red hot stand because boiling tube is not flying. We need to clamp the boiling tube. The right hand side will have delivery tube connecting to the inverted test tube. How you collect those gas. And inside a water bath, the end of delivery tube, it need to be under water level physics. Remember to draw stopper for the boiling tube because we don't want the ethene gas to escape into the air. How to from ethene become ethanol? Through hydration. Hydration is not hydrolysis, right? Hydration is just adding water. Adding water, but the water is exists in the form of steam. Steam is hot liquid, so it needs a specific temperature and specific pressure, which is 300 degrees Celsius and 60 atm. And using phosphoric acid as the catalyst. Okay, how to from ethene becomes ethane? Ethene has two empty spaces while ethane has extra 2H compared to ethene. So adding two hydrogen into those two empty spaces is just hydrogenation. I wrote it wrongly here. It's hydrogenation. So adding hydrogen gas, also using catalyst nickel or platinum powder, powder form for a higher rate of reaction, chapter one. Okay, now it comes to an end for all the chemical reaction, how they relate to each homologous series. Now let's look at those chemical reaction inside each homologous series. Okay, first thing is combustion. Combustion is found in alcohol, alkene and alkane. Burn in excess oxygen, remember excess, because if it's limited oxygen would be incomplete combustion and have different product. Excess oxygen will form carbon dioxide and water. But the difference is that for ethanol, it will burn in blue flame. Or for ethene, it will burn with sootier flame. Ethane has less sooty flame compared to ethene. Why it has less sooty flame? Due to the percentage of carbon by mass. Okay, next, the tree reaction for acid. The tree reaction is just the typical tree reaction for acid base chapter, which is reacting with the metal, reacting with alkali or base, the neutralization, and also reacting with metal carbonate. Okay, first one reacting with the specific metal. Only these two metal I remember. Okay, do you have a friend called Zi Ming? Just remember Zi Ming. Zi Ming. Zi is Zing. Ming is magnesium. And this reaction is called displacement. It will form salt and hydrogen. Remember it's hydrogen, uh, not water. You just look at the reactant. What is reacting with the acid? You were just using zinc and magnesium, right? Zinc and magnesium, there's no OH inside. So you can't form water with just metal itself. Okay, next, neutralization, which is reacting with alkali or base. Alkali is potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. Base is metal oxide, any metal oxide. Copper oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, anything. Form salt and water. Why there's formation of water? Because there's O inside the reactant that is reacting with the acid. Look at the base. Base has metal oxide, got O, while alkali has KOH, OH, the O, or NaOH. So once the reactant reacting with acid has the O inside, then only form the water. The third one would be reacting with metal carbonate, copper carbonate or magnesium carbonate. 
there's O also so there will be water formation and every time when you see carbonate ah, you straight write carbon dioxide first then if there's extra O then confirm form water okay next would be alkene reaction first one halogenation halogenation there are two types bromine chlorine in aqueous form and bromine and chlorine in gas form so bromine and chlorine in aqueous form would be dissolving these two halogen in tetrachloromethane or dissolving in water there's one question in SPM asking if dissolve bromine in tetrachloromethane and reacting with ethene will the bromine decolorize so the answer is yes the most common one is using aqueous form because aqueous form you don't need any catalyst while gas form you need catalyst which is tetrachloromethane CCL4 and also bromine gas is poisonous so it's harder to handle so addition reaction is very simple because ethene will have two empty spaces so you just add to those two empty spaces so you take out the double bond put single bond the halogen add to the empty spaces next is hydrogen halides hydrogen halide is hydrogen with halogen as as an ion so it's called as halide so hi or hbr or hcl in the form of gas how you name it is hydrogen iodide hydrogen bromide hydrogen chloride instead of hydrochloric acid so same thing butong add to the empty spaces next is reacting with acidified potassium manganate 7 the slash h plus is the acidified how to become acidified you need water right and kmno4 is oxidizing agent the bracket o which is oxidation plus water and now you see the reactant it has o, two o and two h so it will form one o it will form two groups of oh which is called as diol diol is an alcohol with two hydroxyl group two oh okay how to name diol you need to see there's how many carbon inside first then only see the oh is at which carbon now it's at carbon number two and carbon number three so two comma three dash diol so it's not like how you normally name methanol propanol or those next is polymerization polymerization is how you change from monomer become polymer so it's true porcelain chip in the condition of 200 degrees celsius and 1200 atm so how you remember this is 200 200 ma. like just now that one is 360 3 and 6 is like sun er liu 3 times 2 equals to 6 so 360 or well now is 200 1200 so it will form from ethene become polyethane the other two addition reaction would be hydration and hydrogenation okay so what's the only reaction for alkane besides combustion is substitution substitution is much more slower than addition substitute one of the h atom in ethane to halogen atom by using uv ray so it will form haloalkane which is chloroethane and hydrogen chloride if i'm using chlorine molecules for this substitution to happen if we were to ask for observation for substitution the hydrogen chloride or hydrogen bromide form would be white film produced while for the cl2 and br2 because they are reactant they will be reduced in amount right so the pale yellow for chlorine the intensity of pale yellow will decrease or the intensity for bromine which is reddish brown would decrease okay let's talk about those tests to distinguish each homologous series the most common one would be the halogenation and using the oxidizing agent which is acidified potassium manganate 7 halogenation is how bromine from reddish brown becomes colorless once the halogenation happen and how chlorine gas becomes from pale yellow becomes colorless so this is the most common reaction to distinguish between alkene and alkane next is with the oxidizing agent how to from purple to colorless so this is the same thing for the oxidation how ethanol become ethanoic acid oxidation could only happen for ethanol but not ethanoic acid if we were to distinguish these two oxidation is to add o into ethanol to form ethanoic acid so the observation for oxidation is how the acidified potassium manganate turn from purple to colorless while for potassium dichromate 6 is how to from orange to green next if we were to distinguish ethanoic acid with other thing 
and using the reaction under ethanoic acid, you can use the hydrogen gas and the CO2 to distinguish. Hydrogen gas release, you can use lighted wooden splinter to form the pop sound. So how to write the confirmatory test to carry out this using the lighted wooden splinter is by placing the lighted wooden splinter at the mouth of test tube containing hydrogen gas, pop sound will produce. Then for CO2, plus carbon dioxide gas through lime water, lime water will turn murky.